moment. I know y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. Yes, God will bring something back to you because you don't have the fullness of it. And when I don't have the fullness of it, I'm not able to uh, release it and cause it to have the impact that it should have upon your life. I want the word to impact you to the point that when you leave here, my God, you're talking about what God has said all day long. You're jumping for joy, speaking in tongues, and knowing that God has made a deposit in you for the time that you reside in. I might not be able to keep myself today, but I'm a, if I jump, if I lose it, y'all pray for me. Uh, uh, no, I'm not in my flesh, but I feel good because I finally got my flesh under my feet. I told y'all this year I was going to be the boss. The flesh that bossed me for so many years. This year, I'm the boss. I, I got my foot on the flesh. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This morning in the Elkhart Church, God led me to minister from the subject overcoming temptation. And I talked about this time, the instruction of the Holy Ghost, how the Holy Ghost would instruct you. He is your instructor. He will give you directions in, in a time frame in your life when it's time to fail. When it's time to kill it so it won't kill you. Anytime you're coming into a period of great temptation, anytime you're coming into a, a period of great trial, God will always release a time frame of fasting so he can get you out of the way. Yes, yes. Will everybody please stand in reference to the word of God, please? Thank Amen. you, Lord. I thank God so much for you um, this morning. Uh, let us go to Luke chapter number 13, verse number 6 through verse number 9. Very familiar passage of scripture, but I'm going to take some things out of the scripture, uncover some things, and I want you to get impregnated with the word today. Somebody say impregnated with the word. Impregnated with the word. Amen. Impregnated with the word. The Bible calls the word of God in Mark chapter number 4. It says that the sower, he sows the seed. The Bible calls in 1 Peter the word of God, the incorruptible seed of God that always brings forth a harvest. It's impossible for you to tell me that you have allowed the word of God to come down into your heart and that the ground of, uh, of your heart is the ground and that that ground has been broken up and that if that ground is fertile and the word of God came in there and you held fast to it, that it did not manifest its harvest. It's never the word. The word is incorruptible. It's always the ground. Somebody say the ground. The ground, the ground is the heart of a man. God sows his word into our hearts. But I want to ask you something. What else is in your heart? Many times there are other things in your heart that choke out the word and cause the word to become unfruitful. Many times your heart is hard and callous so the seed is not able to get in there. Ain't nobody saying nothing in the church. The seed is just laying on the top of the word. It's laying on the top of the surface of your heart and it's not able to penetrate. The Bible calls that a stony heart. That's right. That's why it's important that you get rid of some stuff. That's why it's important that you forgive, that you let go, that you cast off bitterness, that you cast off all of that unforgiveness, all of that hurt, all of that pain, all of those things that have made your heart hard to the point that we cannot plant the word of God in your heart. Let me read this scripture before I get in trouble. I gotta go and I got a time limit. He spake also a parable. A spiritual riddle. A certain man had a feed tree planted in his vineyard. His vineyard, a personal pronoun. And he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Then he said unto the dresser. And the dresser is another word for a caretaker. He was the caretaker of the vineyard. And he said to the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and found none. I'm frustrated. Cut it down. Why bother or cumber it in the ground? Why bother with this thing? Why keep it in the ground? It is not productive. And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till 
lie shall dig about thee and dung it. And if it bear fruit, well. And if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. I want to talk for a few minutes this morning from the subject, another Jesus. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God has given us another Jesus. Since in 2009, I can say that we were not as fruitful as we should have been. The fact of the matter, some of us did not bear food at all. But I believe that Jesus is interceding on our behalf. And God is giving us another chance to bring forth. The word another, it means um, one more or an additional. The word chance is an opportunity. So God is giving us one more or an additional opportunity to get things right. I'm reminded of the scripture in Genesis chapter number one, verse number 11 and 12, that God blesses all plant life and he speaks to it and tells it to be fruitful. Am I talking to anybody? At this time, all plants are blessed and they're good. Because he says it in Genesis 1.31. He looked at all that he had created and he said, it is good, yeah, it is very good. And he even blessed mankind. And he looked at him and he said, it's good, except for one area. I don't want him alone. But Jesus in Mark chapter number 11, verse number 14 and 21, he comes upon a fig tree in the time of hunger. And the Bible says it was not even the time for the fig tree to be bearing fruit, but there should have been buds. It had leaves, but the fact of the matter, there were no buds, and buds were an indicator that fruit will come. I just want to ask you something. It might not be fig season right now, but are you budding? It frustrated Jesus because he knew if there was not any buds at this time, that there would be no fruit. And Jesus done something that troubled me. It messed me up. Jesus said, this tree shall bear fruit no more. And he cursed something that was blessed. I heard a great woman of God say something that really helped me. After God blesses something and speaks to it, it cannot come back void. It cannot dysfunction. It cannot disobey. It should not be disobedient. It, whatever God speaks to, it's supposed to respond to the word of God. And she used the word. She said uh, uh, it was not productive. Uh, uh, and, and she talked about this. Tree. She said it was not productive because it had a responsibility to bear fruit after God had blessed it. It had a responsibility. Listen, what she said. She said it had the ability given from God to respond. At a certain season, it was supposed to respond. I want to ask a question. You've been in here a few seasons. According to the ability that God has divinely imparted in you, I want to ask you, have you responded to the ability that's on the inside of you? There's a lot of things that you should have accomplished. There's a lot of things that you should have been, uh, uh, you should have been producing now. But there's no evidence, no blood. And there's no fruit. So he curses something. That is blessed. He has a problem when something has been blessed by God to produce, but it refuses to obey God. Come on now. Mm. I know what you said, but I refuse. Oh, Come on. I refuse.